So this is problem number one. It's from the 2016 AP Calc AB exam. It also appeared on the BC exam. And it's a table of values problem. And if you read the situation that's described, water is being pumped into a tank at a rate modeled by W of T. So W of T is defined by this exponential function. Uh, it's measured in liters per hour, holds from zero to eight, and T is being measured in hours. Water is also being removed from the tank at a rate modeled by R of T. R of T has the same units as W of T, liters per hour. R is differentiable and decreasing from zero to eight. And then they give us these values of R of T in the table. So R of T at zero is 1340 liters per hour. And then at eight, it's down to 700 liters per hour. And since they tell us it's decreasing, we know we're never going upward at all with these values. We're always consistently working our way downward. Uh, and then it says at time zero, we've got 50,000 liters of water in the tank. Part A says estimate R prime of two. Show the work that leads to your answer, indicate units of measure. So in any table of values problem that you've seen from other AP exams, uh, you've probably done something similar to this. You want to know an estimate for R prime of 2. Well, you can't find R prime of 2 because you don't know the function R of t. But what you can say is, hey, if I find the average rate of change of R, on the interval from 1 to 2, that's going to be a pretty good estimate for the instantaneous rate of change at the value smack dab in the middle of that interval. And so we're just going to do a regular old slope calculation to compute our average rate of change. Uh, on the exam, you can leave your answer looking like this if you want to. Once it's no longer dependent on R, uh, once it's dependent on numerical values only, you can leave your answer like this. Uh, if you want to simplify here, you end up with negative 120 liters per hour are the units in this numerator here, and then the units in the denominator are hours. So we're looking at liters per hour per hour or liters per hour squared. Part B says use a left ream on sum, four subintervals indicated by the data in the table to estimate the total amount of water removed from the tank during the eight hours. Is this an overestimate or an underestimate for the total amount of water removed? Give reason for your answer. So this is something that you've done a ton of over the course of AP Calculus. You have uh, the rate that water is leaving the tank given by R of T. Uh, you want to know how much water leaves from hour zero to hour eight. Uh, you're going to integrate the rate of change for the water exiting the tank from zero to eight to develop that result. We can't find the exact value of this because we don't have the function R of T. We just have these numerical values for it. So we're going to estimate it with a left ream on sum. So if you think about a left ream on sum, your first subinterval goes from zero to one. So your first rectangle has a width of one and the left endpoint, the height of the function at the left endpoint is going to be 1340. So here's the area of rectangle one. We're going to add on to that the area of the next rectangle. Well, the next rectangle ranges from the t-value of 1 to the t-value of 3, so it has a width of 2, and the height is going to come from the function value at the left endpoint, 1190. Next rectangle, width of 3, times 950 for the height, uh, and then the last rectangle, width of 2, times 740 for the height of it. If you want to leave your answer looking like this, that's definitely something you are allowed to do. If you simplify and you don't get this result, your answer won't receive full credit on the exam, whereas this result right here would have. Uh, but if you do simplify this, you should end up with 8050. It says, why are you looking at either an overestimate or an underestimate? Well, if you think about it, this R of T function, they tell us in the problem statement that it's decreasing. Right? So if the R of T function is decreasing and we construct a left ream on sum, the height of each of these rectangles is coming from the highest function value within each interval, and therefore our left ream on sum is definitely going to be producing an overestimate. Main thing for your rationale would be because the function is decreasing. That's why the left ream on sum gives you that overestimate. In part C, use the answer from part B to find an estimate for the total amount of water in the tank to the nearest liter at the end of eight hours. So it's not just how much leaves the tank. That's what we were able to estimate at the conclusion of part B. That's indicated right here. Whoops. So to figure out how much water there is in the tank at the end of the eight hour time frame, we are definitely going to have to consider how much we started with, 50,000. We're going to have to add on how much water enters the tank from time zero to time eight by integrating the rate that water enters the tank from zero to eight. And then we're gonna subtract off how much water leaves the tank over the course of that time frame. And that was our, our result from part B. We've got 8,050 liters leaving the tank as our estimate uh, from hour zero to hour eight. 
So the only thing that you're going to have to make sure you do here is, is you recognize, hey, the calculator is in play. Use the technology to evaluate this integral right here. So I just evaluated everything on my calculator screenshot right here. I had my 50,000 plus my numerical value for the integral of w of t from 0 to 8 and then minus my 8050 as always watch your grouping symbols but if all goes successfully into the calculator for you you should end up with 49,786 liters and they did ask us to go to the nearest liter here right so for once on the non on the calculator section we didn't really need to carry these three digits of accuracy and that kind of makes sense you know this is an estimate anyhow so there's not really a lot of sense in carrying digits beyond the decimal when this in and of itself is going to be an estimate what's the point of including values after the the decimal but uh, there's part c and then in the last part of this the last part of this is kind of in my opinion the trickiest part uh, it says from zero to eight is there a time when the rate at which water is pumped into the tank is the same as the rate at which water is removed from the tank so basically they're saying does w of t ever equal r of t somewhere within the interval from zero to eight. So what I did here is just to kind of give myself a little bit of a starting point, I graphed W of T on the window from zero to eight. I think I increased my, my Y max here to 2,500. And what I noticed was I noticed that W of zero is 2,000. W of eight is 81.54. Uh, since W of T is, a, is continuous, we know that it has to cross every y value between 2000 and 81 somewhere between time zero and time eight uh, if we apply and that's because of the intermediate value theorem if we apply the intermediate value theorem to the function r of t since r of t is differentiable to get from this y value to this y value so this y value is smaller than the the biggest value that w of t takes on uh, and then this value is bigger than the smallest value that W of T takes on. R of T has to cross all Y values between 1340 and 700 as we go from 0, 1340 to 8, 700. And if W on the same range of T values has to get from this Y value to this Y value while crossing all Y values in between, yes, there, there's no way that w of t and r of t if we're able to graph it are going to be able to to not cross each other or not equal each other at least once within that interval uh, so it is definitely kind of wordy here i kind of paraphrase what i had in, in writing on the screen uh in ver verbally but uh yes it's definitely going to happen the, the reasoning that's that's what makes this part kind of kind of tricky but that is number one from the 2016 exam